Hey folks, welcome back to Ontario Fishing Quest. It's Pete here. Thanks for tuning in. Today I'm talking all about frog fishing. I shot some on the water footage from the last two days of my June trip to Ambleside Cottage Resort and uh, caught some decent fish on some frogs and I, I shared some on the water tips that I thought would be very useful to you. And I'm also going to show you on my workbench here what I do to my frogs to uh, help hook up more bass and um, I think these tips will help you too. Um, there's a couple of things I do that are maybe a little bit different than other folks, so you're going to want to tune into this. If you want to learn more about bass fishing here in the province of Ontario, please subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, like and comment. So come along with me as I show you tips and tricks and take you in the boat with me and we go frogging. So this right here is a brand new live target frog in the 55 size. These run about $14 in Canada, sometimes a little less, sometimes a little bit more. It just depends on where you uh, where you buy it. This is two and a quarter inches long and it weighs five eighths of an ounce. This particular color is black and tan. Now I know they are a little pricier, but they are definitely worth the money and I'm going to show you why. I run almost exclusively live target frogs now, but I do use a few, uh, a few other scattered ones as well for walking frogs. The, the live target 55 size is my absolute favorite, but I also do use the 65 size, which is just a little bit bigger. I tend to run these later in the year um, on a nice day in the fall when the bass are up shallow. And the key for me is I love the bright belly. I'm going to talk about that in the video that you're going to see, but I love a bright belly frog on sunny days or cloudy days. It just seems to work for me. But I also have a variety. I have uh, white belly and black belly as well, but uh, this is a go-to for me. Another type of frog I use a lot is the Spro Bronzei 65. It's a popping frog. And I have a few of these in different colors, but um, for any open water application or light grass application, I use these a lot. Now these tweaks and mods that I'm going to show you, I do for all my frogs. It doesn't matter if they're the popping frog or the walking frog or the 55 size or the 65 size. I do it for all of them. Okay, really nice color frog here. This is the first one I have in this pattern on the belly, so I think this will be actually really, really good, especially on maybe some darker days with this darker color here. Nice dark legs, it's gonna be really nice. So the first thing that I do, and probably the easiest, is just to trim the legs. These come really long, probably close to four inches. And so if you think about a bass wanting to grab this, if he's not fully committed to it, he's probably just gonna smack it. And with the really long legs, he tends to bite further back on the bait away from where the hooks are. So I like to trim these legs to about two to three inches. And the way I like to do that is to pinch both legs together. And I'm trimming about an inch off here, so. And that's good, that just creates a little more compact profile and will help the bass grab more upwards on the bait towards the hooks. Now that the legs are nicely trimmed up to where I want them, the next thing I do is to bend the hooks out. And the easiest way to do that is to flip the frog over the hooks. So you push in on the center, which is actually one of the reasons why these live target frogs are so good, is because they are so soft. They are very well made, they compress really, really easily when a bass grabs them. They're not stiff at all. You don't need to work them in. And the quality of the hook is very, very good. And these bodies last for a very long time. So I thought I would touch on that. But to bend it over, push it in in the center. Put your thumb underneath the frog. Lift it up. And then wrap it around the hook. Now your hooks are totally exposed. It's much easier, it is much easier, pardon me, to work on the hooks from this point. The way I do this is I take two pairs of pliers. And I put pressure outwards the opposite direction. good amount of pressure 
and do that one more time. There are other ways to do this, but this is just a quick and easy method. Okay, here we go. Now also from this point, you can sharpen your hooks because the hooks are totally exposed. So, take a hook file and sharpen these hooks until they are sticky sharp. Right now, if I put my thumb on this, the hook just slides right across. You want to file these down until they stick into your thumb when you run your thumb across it. Okay, now that my hooks are nice and sticky sharp and I've bent my hooks out, each one, I'm going to bend the frog back over the hooks and she's all ready to go. This can be a little tricky, especially with these sharp hooks. The, the hook point might want to dig into the body of the frog, but there we go. And now you can see, if you look right there, there's a little gap in between the hook point and the body of the frog. That's exactly what you want on both sides. These sharp hook points will really help to hook a bass that hasn't fully committed to the frog. He maybe has just smashed it or he, he just he's angry at it. He wants to maybe stun it before he strikes it. Um, these sharp hook points will really help just to sort of penetrate the hook just enough to give you enough time to react and set the hook properly. And those right there are the modifications that I do for my frogs and I'm ready to go fishing. Ah, good stuff. Come here, bud. Quit going away from me. Not a bad one, guys. Don't seem to be getting uh, as much size back here today, but catching some fish, and I'm kind of learning the area, so. Yeah, that's cool. Not terrible. <laughs> I'll take it. See, bud. I switched up frogs, guys. I knew it was going to be a bit calmer water, and I also knew I wanted to start over here and all these lily pads and that. And the popping frog is great for some moderate cover, but once you get into pads and heavy stuff, it uh, it gets all caught up in the lip. So went with a walking frog today. This is a live target frog. I'm not sure what the back pattern or the color is called, but I pretty much buy any live target frog with a yellow or orange belly on it. If you think about it, pretty much every frog out there has a white or black belly. There's not as many uh, with an orange or a yellow belly on it. And it's just a confidence thing for me. I just find the bass love it. On a sunny or an overcast day, it just seems to work. So, see how we do today. So a situation like this, I've got slop and reeds to my right. And I've got fairly open water just with some isolated pads and stuff like that on my left. Here's where it would be super handy to have two frog and combos. One with a walking frog like this tied on that you'd throw to the right over top of the pads and the slop. I see a little bubble there. And one that you'd throw to your left in the more open water towards those isolated patches of pads and stuff with a popping frog on. And then you can walk it back to the boat, kind of spitting up water and stuff like that. But I do not have the luxury of two frogging combos. That is my next uh, rod to add to my arsenal, is a second frogging combo. And to make that happen, I'm selling a crankbait combo. Because I just don't fish crankbaits like ever.
I want to get a Mega Bass Levante Perfect Pitch, 7-2 rod. It's the one that Mega Bass would recommend for frogs. And I use the Levante Jerkbait Special and Flatside Special, and I love both those rods, so I know I'd be happy with it. Or a Dobbins Champion XP 735. Those are the two combos I'm contemplating. Maybe you guys want to leave a comment down below which one I should go for. See the little fish try and grab it? That's hilarious. I kind of want to throw back in there and see if I can catch him. I don't think he's very big because he's just grabbing onto the tails. He just needs to suck it down. You guys see why I cast it into this spot? That little patch of reeds sticking up in the middle with the stump right there as well. Subtle differences is what uh, what I'm throwing towards. And sure enough, there was a fish there. You could spend all day just throwing at identical stuff, just pads and pads and pads, but look for things that are just different. Guys, when you miss a fish on a frog, like what just happened to me, don't think it's because of anything that you did wrong, because it's not always. A lot of the times it's smaller fish, and they're grabbing here. You hear them smack it, and they're grabbing right here. They're not engulfing the frog. A bigger fish will usually come up and just suck the whole frog down, and it's easier to set the hook on them. So if you're getting blow-ups and you're missing fish, don't get too down on yourself because honestly, they're, they're smaller fish and there may not be ones that you are necessarily targeting anyways. I find with frogging, the, uh, the fish that you end up catching are usually better quality because they're bigger and they just come and they suck the whole frog down. Now, occasionally you catch smaller fish. I've done it this trip too. Not a bad one, guys. Well, <laughs> okay. <laughs> he weighs more because of all the slop he pulled in, too. <laughs> That's awesome. I thought this was a bigger fish. I thought this was a bigger fish because of the way he hit and all the slop that got pulled in with him. <laughs> Good start to the day. Two pounder anyways, but it's something. <laughs> okay, bud. Thanks for the fun. See you later. Frogging. That's what you gotta do. Make sure especially after you catch a fish to squeeze the water out of your frog. I usually like to do it every five or six casts. They do take on water. I don't know if you guys can see it or not, how bent out these hooks are. But I think I mentioned it yesterday that you gotta sharpen your hooks as well as bend them out. I bet you that's why that fish got hooked because he only had one hook in him. So we didn't grab it all that well. But I bet you the sharpened and bent out hooks made a difference on that one. this little guy wow he was aggressive wasn't I like just talking about that you normally get better bites on frogs yeah I might have lied to you see you bud oh easy bud
There's a fish in here. <laughs> Check this out, guys. Whew. There's a fish in here. I pulled in about 35 pounds of slop. There he is. Look at that. <laughs> That's so funny. When he feels much bigger than what he actually is. <laughs> Good times. See you, bud. Thanks for all the mud and slop and stuff. Half the time you end up pulling in a ton of salad. But you're fishing these frogs and slop and weeds, right? So you need something that's going to have the power to pull them out. So you need a good stiff rod, good backbone, good tip to work a frog, as well as at least 50 pound braid to pull in salad like I just did. <laughs> I want to share another little, another little tidbit with you guys. See this grass here how it always bends the way that the wind is blowing. So right now I'm drifting in with it. You can take a walking frog, throw it out there and work it back towards you when the grass is pointed away from you. Now if I were to turn around and tie on a popping frog, I wouldn't want to throw it this way because as soon as you throw it against the way that the grass is leaning, it'll get all fouled up inside the open lip of a popping frog. So if I had two frogging setups right now on this drift, I'd be throwing a walking frog out in front of me with the wind at my back. And I could throw a popping frog over there and work it the same direction as the grass is bending and it works just fine going over the top of all that grass. But as soon as you try and work it against it, it becomes very much uh, a harder thing to do. There we go, another tip. I kind of sight fished him. I, I thought I saw some movement over in this corner of the pads and so I just pitched the frog in there and, and he went after it. So yeah again it's not the best quality today but uh, it's just fun kind of for my last day to come out and catch some fish on frogs. There you go. Don't be afraid to sight fish frogs. Sight fish frogs for bass. Sight fish frogs for bass. There you go. Anyways guys, another fun fish. It's a good day. I love it. Okay bud. I'll see ya. Just so you guys know, whenever I tie on a new frog, 50 pound braid, I'm using a Palomar knot. I've never had issues with a Palomar knot breaking or anything like that. As long as you tie it right and you wet it before you cinch it, a Palomar knot is probably the strongest knot you can use. I saw a funny meme online that said, there is no bond stronger than love except Palomar knots. So I thought that was funny. Check out a good video online of how to tie a Palomar knot if you don't know how. Best knot ever for braid. pattern continues of small fish but lots of them. So again the story goes for today guys that uh, it's quantity over quality. Frogfish are just such a blast to catch though. 
And if you've got a great big area to cover, like this bay that I'm fishing is just huge. I mean, you could spend days just trying to cover every inch of it. With the sight fishing thing, what I meant to say, um, I guess what I mean by when I say don't be afraid to sight fish frogs for bass is you're going along and everything just looks so good. I mean, you could throw a frog literally anywhere, but then you're going to spend all day trying to cover, you know, tons of water and you might not catch any fish. So look for subtleties, look for things like, like there, I, like when I caught that little one, I pitched the frog to him because, because I saw the grass move. So look for things like that. Don't just uh, think about, you know, where's my next cast going to go? Where's my next cast going to go? Look for things that tell you where you should cast next. You guys saw earlier one of the blow-ups that I had. And I had thrown it right at a standalone patch of reeds and a stump right beside it. And there's a reason I threw it there was because it's just something different, right? It's, it's, uh, it stands out. So frogging a lot of the time is about finding kind of the spot on the spot. And you can cover a ton of water and make a ton of different casts, but it sure seems like the bite comes from, you know, when a couple different types of weeds come together, when you've got grass and you've got milfoil, where you've got a seam in between them, or you've got a stump and you've got reeds right there. Try a few different weed types and see if they're relating to one or the other. Maybe they're in lily pads, maybe they're in grass, maybe they're in milfoil. One thing I'll share guys is about reels. Get a fast gear ratio, get as fast a gear ratio as you can get for frogs and have a setup specifically for frogging. So this one here is a Daiwa Fuego. It's a uh, eight one, I believe it is. Eight gear ratio. I really like it. It's a pretty budget friendly reel. My only, uh, I guess gripe about it would be just its palm ability and its weight, but for a, you know, hundred dollar reel, what can you expect? I think for my next frog and setup, I'll go with a uh, Corrado, Shimano Corrado 8 to 1. I have one on my topwater rod that was new to me this year and I absolutely love it. But the rod is in question, so Hopefully you guys can help me out with that. Dobbins Champion XP735, split grip, or Mega Bass Levante Perfect Pitch. You guys tell me. Okay guys, I just thought of another tip and probably my last one for the day, so don't worry. I'm not good at giving these tips, but here's another one. When you set the hook on a frogfish, your rod has got to be so stout, and you've got to absolutely crush the hook set. You got to give them a TV hook set, okay? Like you see guys on YouTube and on bass tournaments and stuff. When they set the hook, it looks like they're about to fall out of the boat. Well, you got to do that because these hooks are so thick and there's two of them. And so it takes a ton of force to be able to penetrate those into a bass's mouth. So don't hook set lightly. If you hook set lightly, you're going to lose the fish. Swing for the fences every time you hook a fish. If you hear a, a splash and your frog is gone, you swing for the fence every single time and you reel that thing in. Don't stop. Don't play with it. Just reel it into the boat. Reel as hard as you can and set the hook well. You'll hook up with a lot more frogfish. Okay. Hey guys, out here fun fishing. Decided to come out again after I came in. Got a little smally out here fun fishing with John, the owner of Ambleside Cottage Resort. That's where I'm staying. John's the man. He treats me like royalty and he'll treat you the same. So, see you bud. Baby, hi. Oh, hi. How's it going? Good, how are you? Thank you for calling me. Oh, you're welcome. So, you kind of kind of have a voice. I do, it's amazing. Wow, you didn't have a voice for how many days? It was 
six days. Six days with no voice, and now you're starting yeah. to break through finally. Woohoo, yep. Wow. Wow. That's, mm -hmm. that's good to hear. <laughs> it's like usually people would say you have to read between the lines, and I'm like, no, you have to read between the cracks of <laughs> the voice. <laughs> read between the cracks. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Absolutely. No, yeah. it's, it's good to hear your non-voice. Oh, no. well, no. it's very good to hear your voice. <laughs> Imagine if we both sounded like you did. <laughs> we would really be quite something. Oh, it'd be a sight. Wow. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, love, you're awesome. Okay, well, drive safe. Oh, I will. I got some snackies to tide me over, and I plan on just giving her until I get home. I might just grab a coffee somewhere, but... Sure. Other than yeah. that, I'll <laughs> just be giving her. Oh, and I brought you a gift. Sorry. What? I brought you a gift. What is it? I'm not telling you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you? That's like you were thinking of me or something. Oh, just a tidbit, yeah. <laughs> Always. I'll give you a little yeah. snuggle when I get in bed tonight. Yeah, okay. Alrighty. Sounds good. Okay. Thanks for chatting. Yeah, thank you. Help I'll talk with you later, okay? It helped pass the time, so. Yeah, oh, that's good. Gracias okay. to you. <laughs> Any, anytime, de nada. Oh, uh, de nada. Alright. I love you so much, hon. Okay. Yep, I love you. Alright, we'll see you soon. Talk to you later. Yep. Okay, bye. Bye. She has had a virus for a week, actually more than a week, I think. It started as like kind of flu-like symptoms, but it turned into this strep throat, and what we thought, and anyways, she went to see the doctor this past week, and uh, yeah, it was a virus of some sort. But thankfully she's on the med, she didn't have a voice for, I forget what she said, a long, a couple of weeks anyway, she had no voice at all. So thankfully she's getting her voice back, slowly but surely. So, it'd be nice to see her soon. Well, folks, I'm heading home. Retake. I hope you guys learned about the basics of uh, frogging and learned a trick or two. If you want to go much more in depth on frogging, check out guys like Tactical Bassin. Um, they're probably the best all around bass fishing video. Uh, Goodness sakes, I can't talk. Tactical bassing is probably the best, most educational bass fishing channel on YouTube, bar none. So check out Tactical Bassing, Matt and Tim, they're awesome guys. But as for my stuff, I hope you got uh, a few tips and tricks and techniques and the basics down. And I hope you're entertained a little bit along the way too. Check out Ambleside Cottage Resort and Bob Cajun, okay? Those guys are fantastic. John, the owner there, you'll see him on a video somewhere at some point. Um, he goes really out of his way to make sure that you have a great time, that you're comfortable, and, and he's just, he's a great guy, um, great young family, and so I like to support guys like that, and I keep coming back. I've been back there. I think this is my fourth or fifth time back there, so check out Ambleside Cottage Resort, Bob Cajun. Uh, the beauty thing about it is you can fish right on that lake, you can fish on the neighboring lake. Within an hour you can get to hundreds of lakes, honestly. So I moved around different lakes this week and, and I'm glad I did. It was a lot of fun. Thanks for coming along. Thanks for sticking with me through my successes and my failures. I hope you learned something and I hope you were entertained. That's all for now, folks. I'll check in with you on the next one. Thanks for tuning in to Ontario Fishing Quest. I'm Pete. And I'll see you next time.